We're gonna watch this video, Asmongold's video, with uh with Ian Hazakostas. Again, uh, I have not seen this. Ep- I have not seen this episode. Whatever. I have not seen this this uh, interview. Uh, I haven't. Uh, I have no idea what's uh, what we're about to see. I I don't know if I like. I I don't really care about retail too much. Let me just preface this by saying I don't have a real like. I I really don't care that much about retail, right? But uh, it it'll be fun at least. This will be a it'll be a fun thing to watch. Uh, I do want to hear more about like the things I'm interested in retail before I watch this video. I'm interested in the talent trees, uh, and I'm interested in killing dragons. Those are the two things that I'm interested in from the drag from the from the dragon flight uh, uh, video. Right? I want to kill a dragon, like a bad dragon who's hoarding gold. I want to kill a dragon who's hoarding gold or a hoarding a princess, and I want to see what the talent trees are all about. Those are the things that intrigue me about dragon flight. Because talent trees make me excited for the ability to customize my character. But what about the ducks? I don't give a duck. All right? I really don't care. Let's go, dude. I want to see. So those are the things I'm most excited. Talent trees and um, uh, what did I just say? Oh, killing a dragon. Me? I don't care about the playing the dragons. The the dragons that they added, look, I they look horrible. They look like... Uh, they, I don't like the way they look at all. They have no... I mean, I guess they're they're very live and cute and I don't want live and cute I want strong and big and muscular because that's who I am in life and so I want a character that looks just like me you know yes I can okay I- all right well um I have to say I am kind of amazed that this is finally happening over uh I am too actually when I heard so. about I when I heard as so, uh, doing this, yeah I, I want to say thanks a lot for coming on I really appreciate it man no absolutely it's a pleasure been a while since bumping into you like coming off stage at blizzcon years back yeah four years ago i i saw somebody post the picture and it was uh quite a uh quite a shock to see how much hair i had back then really was you and me both <laughs> yeah well the first thing i want to ask is now that shadowlands is primarily over what would you really say are the biggest successes of shadowlands what, what do you think that we can expect to see going forward uh definitely covenants I think, you know, Covenants okay. want to make sure, like, that's actually, I think we want to fit those into Dragonflight. And, yeah. Um, so, uh, high level, I think, narratively. <laughs> trolling Asmongold there. Immediately trolls him. And Asmongold's like, what? I'm not. And he's like, we don't, definitely want to fit them in Shadow. <laughs> he tells him Covenants straight up. They were the best thing in the game. And Asmongold's just like, I, uh, uh. One of the big challenges and exciting things about Shadowlands was making something brand new in World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. Like we've over the years mined out a lot of the lore, a lot of the original settings from Warcraft 3 and onwards. And, you know, every time comes time to make it. Yeah, no, I mean, the reason I feel like we went to Shadowlands was because they they were like, we need to keep expanding the lore, right? They keep having the void and the light and the and the. They made the whole uh, book of lore and stuff with all the new like explanations for all the different realms of of control and chaos and and uh, you know the titans and their 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 the titans weren't even the the greatest gods. There was even greater gods in the Shadowlands and the, there's different lords of the void and lords of the light and lords of the and you're like oh, uh, okay and so but the, but Dragonflight hopefully and I I really I just like old gods I like dragons. And I like uh, that's about it. I want to kill dragons and old gods, and uh, and and steal some of their gold. Lord of the Lords. Oh, a new expansion. One of the big questions is like, okay, where's left for us to visit? Yeah. And I think the challenge of you know, say what you will about Sylvanas, the Jailer, the rest. I think. Why is this chat building- moving so fast though? What's up? What's that? Why is my chat so slow? I'm trying to figure that out. Environments and building characters and cultures and the enchanted forest of Ardenweald and. You know the gothic castles and cities of Revendreth and so forth. Yeah, I could and not handle that, that feel like an extension of World of Warcraft, and having players really vibe with those environments and call them home. I think that was super satisfying. For Lords of the board. Um, obviously, I think along the way, a lot of the realizations we came to in you know driven by community feedback over the course of you know the middle of Shadowlands nine one five and onward, I think are something that will change WoW for the better forever going forward. 
Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, I, I remember watching the uh, Taliesin interview tomorrow and or <laughs> tomorrow, yesterday, excuse me. Um, and, and you were saying how pretty much all of the stuff is going to be account wide now uh, for Dragonflight or a yep. lot of the in-game systems. I'm sure that will be weaponized against me. And, <laughs> and it's like, hey, Ian, you promised everything. Yeah, and it's like philosophically, you know, yeah, it's get your gear, get your power. That's a character progression. That's part of the journey when you're making a new character. But yeah, access to content, utility, cosmetics, almost all the rest. And we also want to ask the question of like, how fun is the content that you're going to have to do to replay multiple times? Yeah, good and question. The, the, exactly. And the, the, the less it is, the more we want to make that optional. Yeah. Be something you can choose whether. Also, like, gearing your character out and like choices of gearing your character, like when when you when you have to. Like I don't want to play. I don't want to have to gear my character in PvP. I don't want to have to gear my character in season one gear. Then move to season two gear. Then move to season three gear. Once season four is out, right? I want to go straight to season three gear, or whatever the catch-up gear is. Okay, that's great. Yeah, I'm I'm very relieved to hear that. I know that was something that a lot of people complained about in BFA and also Shadowlands. So it's a huge relief. Uh, the next thing is I wanted to ask about the dragon riding abilities in combat. Do you think that we're going to be able to ride these dragons into combat in a battle like Malagos or something crazy like that? Uh, maybe at some point. Yeah, I think really? one, one, of those, one of the things, like, we don't have anything planned like that right at launch. I think we want to really understand really? how the system plays and its strengths and weaknesses and what it's good at. And I'm surprised they wouldn't have something on the launch, like a launch raid. Your Drake companion into some future dungeon or raid encounter or even something in the outdoor world or whatever feels like a cool space to explore. But like, let's build a solid foundation first and then figure out how to build upon it. Focus on step one until we get to step five. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And so outside, uh, dragon riding is obviously something everybody's going to be doing. And of course, we're going to get new raids. We're going to get new dungeons. But... Is there any other content that like just a casual player who just logs on and just wants to enjoy the game at large is going to really have to do on a daily? Well, I mean, have to do in the mandatory sense? Or no, no, like actually, we'll, exactly. we'll, yeah. a little bit of both, but, um, yeah. you know, just like casual fun stuff too, like the Darkmoon Fair, for example. So I'm gonna gonna distract get I was somewhere. getting distracted because Ian keeps going like this, and he's like looking at his notes or something. I think he's looking, and, I'm, and just like, I completely lost track. Let me go back a little second. Part of that? have to do content that like just a casual and so outside uh, dragon riding is obviously something everybody's going to be doing and of course we're going to get new raids we're going to get new dungeons but i don't care about dragon riding does anyone here care about dragon riding like it it sounds like just a gimmicky like mobile version like okay we're gonna ride on dragons which we've been doing for years yes it's a new mechanic to it but it's nothing it's not new like, you call it new, it's just like, here's a harder way to control your flying mount. And you can't use a regular flying mount in this zone. It's a dragon flying only. And so now you have to use our our dragon our dragon riding. I just don't care about it. Like, like, And then you get to expand your dragon, and you get to make your dragon better. And I'm like, and then, but there's no in-combat use for it. I think it'll be fun, but I'm not too invested in the idea. It's a back of the box feature. I think they're just playing it up for the marketing team. Yeah, that's what I think too, right? It's one of those things like, it's one of those things that they're, you're like, oh, okay, but that doesn't change the way I play the game. I do like the idea of a customizable mount. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. It just is it. Okay, yeah, I have to dra I have to ride a dragon here. Okay, cool. It will be interesting, I guess, to find like, dragon riding like areas and like if you're if your mount can't climb in elevation it'll be cool to like find ways to like oh i'll jump off this is a great spot to jump off of to get to where you want to go right like hey the dungeon's over there and so we need to get over to the dungeon and in order to get there we'll just use the lfd tool what am i talking about who uses who you freaking goes to the dungeon oh well mythic dungeons i guess you have to go to the dungeon for a raid all right, raid, but we'll be, that would be cool. You know, actually, actually, will be the coolest. The coolest thing of dragon riding. If there's one cool thing about dragon riding, it'll be cool to be on a PvP server, and you're on your way to raid. So you're leaving the, you're everybody leaves together, 
jumping off the cliff together to get to the raid, right? That'd be cool. Everybody's diving off, dive bombing with the dragon. Some guy decides he's, I'm going to pull up early. And you're like, ah, what are you doing? What are you doing? That's the bad spot. And, he's, and then some guy's freaking arrow comes out of the sky and hits him, knocks him out. And you're like, oh, no, he fell out of the pack. He's too, you're too low. You're too low. Red leader, pull up. Pull up, red leader. And then, like, you just, the other guy hits the ground. Then there's, like, just hordes of alliance at the bottom, like, and, like, it'd be awesome, dude. That, that would be cool. But, like, the, the actual mechanic of it alone, like, oh, I am now a dragon rider, and I ride it, like, we swoop through the sky. Like, not that cool. But the visualization of all your friends and your entire raid jumping off a mountain together and, like, gliding through the air and, like, because of the way the momentum works, it'll be cool, but <clears throat> I don't know. It, it won't be, that'll be like cool for like the first time you do it. <laughs> but is there any other content that like just a casual player who just logs on and just wants to enjoy the game at large is going to really have to do on a daily? Well, I mean, have to do in the mandatory sense? Or no, no, like actually, we'll, exactly. we'll, yeah. a little bit of both, but, um, yeah. you know, just like casual fun stuff too, like the Darkmoon Fair, for example. Are we going to get something similar to that? I mean, so I think maybe not Darkmoon Fair specifically, yeah. but I think we're, yeah, like I think everything, events, world content uh -huh. in general. New way to auto run. Um, yeah, I think Zerath Mortis is like, a, a, it's one zone. We're looking to, in a lot of ways, build, you know, an entire continent, an entire expansion with those philosophies and that approach. And so things like protoform synthesis that currently exist just as, you know, a fun collection space to explore are, is the kind of thing we want to do more of. Um, we, we, I think we've probably, we've, we've in a lot of ways underserved something that may be a, almost a silent majority in our game or a quiet majority, which are people who aren't looking to, you know, top meters and push keys and get their PVP rating up. They just want to explore, do chill stuff. Yeah. And, feel at home in the world and with while still serving you know the core raid dungeon all the rest we want to do more for that group in particular in oh that's life. all okay if that's just marketing speak that's amazing but that's exactly what they should do make the raids make the game more casual friendly while still having some elite stuff to do that's cool if you ever get there that is great i totally agree i'm really glad to hear that and yeah. um another thing is that like, we haven't really gotten, we've gotten some new arenas. We've gotten the Maldraxxus Arena, the Kyrian Arena, but we haven't really gotten a lot of new types of content for, like, a PvP or to do, like, Battlegrounds and just types of PvP, other than, obviously, Solo Shuffle, and apparently Raided's coming to that. Are we going to see more Battlegrounds or more War Mode features in Dragonflight as well? Long term, that's something we want to do. I think the focus, as you mentioned, is on a Raided version of shuttle, Solo Shuffle. Um, taking a you know some making some changes to the way gearing works in pvp to make it more just like a couple of fixed tiers so the conquest gear is conquest gear you don't have to worry about you know upgrading it as you go up and rating yeah, we so talked about that on the we talked about that with marco about it would be it'll be boring i don't know if i'd enjoy pvp if the gear doesn't scale in pvp so the the as far as i'm aware this is how pvp gear works in dragonflight you get your season one blue gear, right? And whenever you enter a ray, a dungeon, or excuse me, every time you enter a battleground or an arena, your gear gets put at the whatever level is set for the arena or the battlegrounds. And so the enemy team has the same gear level as you because you're both wearing full PvP sets. Even if they are wearing all purples, you're both at the maximum level of damage whatever while you're in the arena bg and then when you exit the bg arena they keep their stats if they have them fully upgraded while you go back down to wearing blues when you, if you go out in the world to farm or something right so you get the out of the bg pv arena growth so if you go world pvp and stuff you're wearing crappy gear but if you're wearing uh if you're going to go farm something you're wearing crappy gear but when you're actually in the arena itself you're all wearing the same gear, which sounds great, except for the people that like to pump early and also the people that just enjoy, like, I guess as a casual player, that's fun. But like as a person who dedicates himself to the game, it's not as enjoyable because the character growth of fighting someone who has bad gear is one of the most fun things in PvP. I know that sounds bad, but I think people like punching down. Uh, I think... 
it's an enjoyable part of PvP. And I think a lot of people play PvP in order to do that. Like twinking is a big reason people twink is because they want to kill people that aren't twinked. They want to kill easy targets. They want to have fun ruining someone's day. You'll be able to outgear people by getting more PvP gear than the next guy early on. Okay, that's true. I guess if you get your full set early on, you'll have an uh, itemization advantage over people who are wearing the their blues or, or epics from uh, from from a raid or something. Okay. Into the season or catching up on alts. Is I'm okay with that. Yeah, you're right. You um, still get that character growth while every time mode, you get a gear just, piece and enter a BG. The best war mode content is the organic stuff. It's not the thing that we set up as like a specific PvP event, but it's something like assaults and... In, in Skill-based competition is better? I don't think... I think that's a reason League of Legends is so popular, though. I don't think... I don't think people like uh, skill-based competitions in their video games. I think most people like a game where you can sometimes carry uh, by being by getting lucky or by being a little bit better than the other person. But your, your small advantages become huge advantages because you farmed gear better or did something early in the game that gave you a little bit of extra gold. So then you can kill everybody and you, oh, you get lucky and kill a guy and now you're six kills ahead. No one can stop you because you're totally carrying everyone. Like people like League of Legends because of the carry aspect of sometimes I just complete I get six items and I dominate the game like that's uh and I don't think people want to fight in like I don't think most people want the stress of fighting uh it's it's almost like it's fun it's fun to play sometimes to to be in an even match setting but other times it's fun to play from behind or something but for the most part you don't want the same you don't want it to be the same every time you want it to be you want it to vary a little bit so that everything's a little bit new nuanced and new and interesting so I'm just worried about the PvP doesn't that only encourage a small subset of people to PvP though? I don't know. I, I think people like PvPing. Like, there's just stuff that both factions want to do. When you get that up, it, it would be you get to do that as well, right? Like that's why League is so popular, though, right? Like some days you get destroyed, and some days you carry, right? And so that's that's what the game has to facilitate, allow you to do that, it has to somehow allow you to sometimes win and sometimes lose, because but it has to give you those those swings. You have to feel like every time you enter a BG, you have that chance to be that that the same guy you did, uh, carrying and destroying people. I think I think that people like that at least. I just I think of games like Battle Right and Bloodline Champions, where everything was even and it was a perfect arena and there was no items and everything was perfect and they weren't popular. Like people don't actually like that. Like the there there weren't very popular games. They gave it was literally Battle Right. And Bloodline Champions was created to be an arena clone where no gearing was involved. And so there was a bunch of classes like League of Legends. It was a top-down uh, MOBA. But you would do 3v3 arenas. And it was very skill-intensive and very uh, much like uh, like what is considered to be the best for parts of arena. Like what people like to brag about why they like arena. Those games came out and like uh, they, you know they were skill-based and they were perfectly even. And it was just based on if you were better at the game or not, if you won. Um, and I don't think new players like that as much, right? It's, it's not, you don't get lucky ever. It's never, it's not fun to never get lucky. Uh, or it's not fun to feel like you don't have a chance. Uh, or I guess you, you feel you have a chance if you get better at the game. But it, uh, there's something about it, man. I don't know. There's something about the ability to sometimes win, even though you're worse at the game. You're gonna get more players if the gear is more accessible. I guess yeah. If the Extra gear is easier to get, though, that's one on. thing. There's natural collision that occurs, and that makes for some fun world PvP. Um, on the battleground question, we we really we want to add more battlegrounds. I think we there's work we need to do to overhaul our kind of underlying BG system. Yeah. Before that makes sense, I think part of what we've seen over the years when we add battlegrounds, we're adding one battleground into a big rotation. You might, which most people random queue for. You might you know queue all afternoon and not land in the new battleground at all and so it's like is that really changing the experience in the way that we would hope that new content would that's why i think recently you've seen a, you've seen us pivot to brawls a lot where we can have at least focus on that specific brawl in a specific week or two but i think you know our as, as our general approach of looking at evergreen systems can you dragon ride in arathi basin that'd be cool what if they did a brawl where you're allowed to dragon ride around the bay, jump off lumber, lumber mill, fly down to uh, fly down to blacksmith, or fly all the way across to mine, drop down on mine? 
the foundations of our game. Kataraji Base is such a good, it's such the, a good the ones we're focusing battleground. on right now for Dragonflight. I think looking at how the BGQ pool works and. Shh. 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 Good girl. Quiet. We don't need the bark. Thank you. Maybe there's something we can do there with a the seasonal rotation going forward that lets us bring in new maps and focus on specific ones. There's a lot of stuff we want to explore in the future, but not for Dragonflight right at launch. So kind of like the seasonal thing that you're doing with the dungeons in Mythic Plus, kind of? Could be, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And uh, now I have kind of a, a, a much bigger question, is that every expansion, we go up like 100 or 150 item levels. Like characters at the beginning of the expansion are doing 20,000 20, DPS. At the end, they're doing 100, like 5x more. And like we've had so many stats glitches right now, we need one like every other expansion. And like with... Uh, uh, with BFA, we needed yeah. one just inside of that expansion. Uh, do you guys see that as a problem, or is that going to be pretty much just the uh, norm going forward? There, there, there are aspects of it that are problematic. I think you know, not having that extra multiplicative borrowed power help keep, helps keep that power creep in check. Like over the course of Legion, some of your power came from gear. A huge portion of it came from dozens of artifact traits and legendaries and all the rest multiplying across that. That was great. Um, but the, the, the item level progression, honestly, that's been part of World of Warcraft since, I would say, the middle of Wrath of the Lich King. Mm -hmm. um, right right yeah. around like Older War into TOC into Ice Crown yeah. was the first time in WoW where we Blizzard kind of officially said, you don't need to go back and farm old raids anymore. Um, you don't need to keep farming for your DFT all expansion long or whatever. It's just the new tier is a fresh start. And that has a lot of advantages in terms of just accessibility, making it feel like it doesn't matter if you missed a patch, you're not forever behind. You can come back, join your raid guild, play with your friends, jump in, you know, join I like pubs, doing old raids, though. and do the new thing. Um, and that's just kind of how WoW has been for the last 15 years. I think we, we've experimented a bit with item level gaps between tiers, but what we- But it, after Ice Crown Citadel and that they did that, the the numbers dropped off a lot. Like all the, the subscribers dropped. What you often find is if an item isn't at least a certain percent better than what you got months ago, and you're having to learn an all new encounter or go into an all new challenge to get it, that just doesn't feel good as a reward. Um, if you're you know a guild that does normal raids and progresses into heroic over the course of a, of a tier, let's say, but you're gonna start normal of the next tier. If that gear isn't better than what you're wearing, like what's the point, where do we even go from there? And so that has dictated certain gaps and i think the most important thing is that rewards feel rewarding in the short term and you know one of the one of the burdens of the you know years long decades long life cycle is doing things like squishes but while we don't love it from an elegance perspective i think it's better than saying this patch or this raid tier is not going to feel rewarding just so that it buys us more long term growth. Uh, and like how, how long do you view that like kind of upgrade cycle being because we've had a few of these overlaps happen hate, like you remember i just think they need to get rid of the they need to get rid of the item levels like the the the, the multiple raid difficulties and all that like these rewards need to be rewarding yeah well i mean it's true though it's true though Fenar. if it wasn't rewarding they they'd be bad and i uh i, I guess they wouldn't make a game like that but i just think they need to lower the i think He's right in that they're doing stat squishes to fix the problem that is they have too many item levels every time their new raid releases. I just feel like they need to make it so that the raids don't have that many item levels. Just have one one raid difficulty and have the hardest boss be like Algalon. Like I thought that was perfect. That Algalon was like a optional boss. You didn't have to kill him to go through all the way to Yogg-Saron. If you killed Yogg-Saron in plus one with one light in the darkness... You felt, oh, you felt great. If you did Memron's fire, you felt great. But you didn't have to, I guess, I guess you get, I would rather have just more, give me more drops every week of the same item level gear. And if you play it on, if you kill it on hard mode, you get more gear each week. So you gear your raid out faster. I don't know. Something about it feels like that feels better than, um, than having better gear constantly dropping or having an optional boss that drops really good gear like Ashvane's Razor Coral or like Ashara's of Font. They have to serve all different player skill levels. They, they, they did before. I feel like you have the easy raid entrance boss and then you let the everybody raid that boss and then as the raid goes on, as you get closer and closer to yogg Saran, the fights get more difficult. And so you have that progression as a raid 
where you learn like, oh, I can kill this boss and this boss, and then we'll move on. But I guess they don't expect, I guess it's not how people actually function in the game. If you don't clear an entire raid, people freak out and they're going to jump ship and join another guild that does clear the entire raid. But I think if there was a shift in the mindset of the developers and said, hey, it's okay if not everybody in the game sees uh, Yogg-Saron or sees Gul'dan or sees uh, uh, Illidan. You guys know I've never done the Illidan fight, ever. Like, I've, I've done the Illidan fight at, like, Cataclysm and going back and just, like, one-shotting him. I've never raided the Illidan fight because I've just never cared to do it. I'm always like, oh. but I've also never been a guy who wants Warglaives, right? I've never been a, on a character that wants Warglaives, so I've never cared about Black Temple. I've never been like, oh, man, Black Temple. Can't wait to go there and get the gear that's in there. I mean, Bulwark of Azanoth is cool. There's a sweet, uh, sweet mace for a Red Paladin that's amazing. Uh... There's that cool stuff. Of course, there's cool gear in there. But I've never been like, oh, man, I really went there. Do you see it as a positive or a negative? Or but that's like, that's how I would do it, is get rid of, is get rid of all like the raid difficulties. Really the whole expansion. You're just kind of playing just the patch. It's like you're... It's like in, during Sanctum of Domination, why would you go back into Castle Nathria? And especially nowadays, why would you go back? And it seems like you're trying to solve that problem a little bit in Season 4 with like these new affixes and things like that. So is that something that we can expect to see going forward into Dragonflight? Um, not not initially, okay. I don't think. But the Season 4 experiment, like I think as a capstone to expansions, is something that if this works, you know, I'd love to love to repeat and love to have a little bit of a remix to help avoid content droughts at the end of expansions, along with, of course, just getting the damn expansion out faster. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I think a lot of this is listening to what players prefer. You know, I think a lot of what we've heard is that when there are those one or two outlier items from prior tiers that feel relevant long term, we get negative feedback on that. People who don't really feel like they want to have to go back and farm up Sylvanas daggers or whatever else, particularly if they skip that tier and now you're like, oh, I want to switch to Rogue in, you know, for, for Sepulchre. Oh, I have to go find pugs and go back and do this other thing. Um, and also, you know, when it's the idea of, of making more stuff in that space, people are often happy to move on from a setting that they've spent months in, whether it's, you know, raiding with a guild, progressing or pugging. Um, a new environment is part of what's exciting there. So I think that's we're, true. Like we're open to it. And people don't want to go far with content. They don't want to, you know, stop those items from being exciting. But I'm not sure that. You know, feel feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I'll certainly look at feedback yeah. that comes out after this interview. But I'm not sure people are clamoring to have reasons to go back and do Sanctum every week right now. It's it's weird because like for some people I think they enjoy it, for others they don't. I mean I know that you know you can always go back and think of the items from like BC or even Wrath, or especially classic. It's like people went back and remember they used that classic trinket in like uh, on Lich King, right? Like that kind of stuff is really cool. Your approach. Yeah. Yes, the scarab brooch from Basidus, exactly. And that stuff is great, but at the same time, it's just not, uh, it, it can be frustrating for people at the same time. And so it's like where that balance is. But you're in general okay with a few items uh, spanning a couple of tiers? Uh, I would say a couple of tiers is probably a lot. I think one tier is <laughs> yeah, fine. I guess so. Yeah, something like, something like Sylvanas Daggers is fine. No Arcana with... Crystal? Yeah, no, not so much. No. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, well, I mean, now that we're talking about loot, um, why do you not want to bring back Master Wooder? So I'm sure everyone is like, why are you even wasting time asking this question? They've answered it 50 times. Uh -huh. But if I told you, I kind of do want to bring back Master Wood. Okay. Um, okay. And the team. So he, he, this is, it's, it's an interesting, something we've been reflecting on a lot in the last like year, year and a half um, in looking at, you know, places where we in the community have differed over huh. the years and, and kind of reevaluating some of our thinking. Master Looter. Mas loot is a tricky one. I think going back to Legion, we had personal loot and group loot in parallel. And maintaining like two versions of loot, both in terms of how its data is set up, the UI experience, the code, um, was a mess. And that was something we wanted to get out of for a bunch of reasons. And I think at the time, we were looking at group loot, saw a bunch of problems with this structure we built. We're like, let's, let's tear it down. Let's lay new foundations. Let's build a new system that's all personal. And over the last few years, we've been iterating on it and refining it and adding rules and exceptions. Um, but there's a lot of problems with it. I, you know, clarity around what's tradable uh, is pretty bad. The feeling of, hey, an item just dropped and I 
it's technically an eye level upgrade, but I'm not going to use it and I can't give it to my friends. That feels pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, we certainly haven't, you know, solved degenerate behavior from world first guilds. If anything, it's, you know, gotten worse with, with all the cross server stuff. Seems that and, way. Yeah. And buyers. And so we're, you know, taking a hard look at where, where we want to land going forward. The challenge is we, we've spent like six years building on those new foundations. And so it's not just something where you can flip a switch and say, all right, everything works the way it did. But I think there's a lot to be said for, you know, keeping per personal loot in some spaces like outdoor world, trash and dungeons and raids. Like, I don't think anyone needs, you know, group loot trappings there. But the core experience of like, you kill a raid boss, there's four things on the corpse and you figure out what you want to do with those four things. That's something we'd like to get back to. Um, I don't have the ability to promise that all the work to make that happen can can occur in, you know, just the next few months. But in terms of long term heading, I think that's what we're thinking. So it's not that the team is necessarily ideologically opposed to this. It's just that there was a lot of tech problems and like the dissonance. And I, I think it was M Taurus whenever this happened, uh, just caused up problems. It's I mean, yeah, it's basically it's yeah. just, we have we have our, our tools, our code, every assumption okay. we've made, and how we build loop tables from, you know, 2018 onwards has gone in one direction and now we would need to just turn back around and i think there's also there's a lot of questions to figure out also i think wow. we should also bear in mind that back yeah to i didn't think about that it's interesting that, like, they had to do a whole bunch of loot changes hunters in the raid yeah and sometimes it's that's just crazy how much is in a game that they have to like build upon they have to take an item and and like 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 a system and then the neck they have to keep that system going and it's crazy to think how they've they did that with Legion, then just threw it out, and BFA and just threw it out, and then now they're going to do it right now in Shadowlands with Covenants and throw them out, and now we got talent trees, and those aren't going to get thrown out, so we're going to build on those. So like, it's interesting to see what systems are just part of core part of the game that are now like just the game. They just are they're in there like like looting is is now personal loot. That's a thing that will happen, and feels bad, but that's kind of okay. Transmog piece. Yeah, because I mean, uh, the thing we can't have happen is a world where loot is still smart, and if you stack a group with like six warriors, you're only going to get warrior loot, and it's completely tradable with no restrictions. That just kind of breaks everything. So we need to just figure out a middle ground going forward, but that's something we want to do. Okay, all right. Yeah, I, I guess that does definitely make sense. I mean, logistically, it seems like it would be very, very easy to stack a raid in that regard. And, uh, you know, I, I would advocate for that, but that's a little bit too much in my own personal interest. <laughs> but um, uh, another thing is that the uh, the add-ons nowadays, uh, you know, we see that there's a huge UI redesign that's being done with uh, with Dragonflight, and I think that's a good thing. And you see nowadays... Yeah, like, I'm liking the UI people, redesign, too. ...whenever they're joining a guild, having weak auras or having DBM is pretty much required, and it creates, like, this artificial gap between, like, casual players and hardcore players... Uh, it's kind of like a two-part question and like number one like does the team i mean just straight up does the team design like these like heroic and like mythic encounters for add-ons same with like uh, mythic plus and the second part is uh are, are we going to see more of these features incorporated into the game uh yeah so that, that, that's that's an awesome question it's something we spend a lot of time especially recently debating um yeah. I, we don't, so we design acknowledging the existence of add-ons. I think we have to. Sometimes we're actually designing and implementing mechanics in ways that are going to try to work around add-ons, whether it's like the, you know, entering the code to disarm the bomb on Mechatork or the Among Us game on Lords of Dread and yeah. you know, fixing stuff to find, to, to plug loopholes that people found because we know like, hey, we, we have this idea that could be really fun gameplay, but if an add-on solves the whole thing for you, then what's the point? Yeah. So yeah. we have to acknowledge its existence. Um, ultimately, we're tuning raid encounters in particular with two goals. One, it should be fun, it's kind of goal number one. Goal number two is it should provide an appropriate progression experience for what for the difficulty and where it is in the raid. And so, you know, a heroic boss that's like late in the tier, our goal ultimately, we probably want that to take like 10, 15 wipes to beat, maybe a couple nights. You know, ideally, a good progression experience is for a heroic guild, you spend your first night make good progress, you're getting to the start of phase three, you come back the next night, you tighten up your execution, you get the kill, feels good. feels like you earned something, but it's yeah. also not super frustrating. If you walk in and you kill the boss in two pulls, that's that's a letdown. We actually, like, you didn't really get to feel the progression experience that you're looking for. And the reality is people are using add-ons. And so if we build a, an encounter that was theoretically, you know, completely doable and targeted at, you know, 
assuming you don't have add-ons at all. They do care about raids? Yeah, yeah. It. No, I think gonna... we've talked about this. The instance content in retail WoW is great. All the instance content's great. It's the it's the world content that suffers. The, the world content needs to be better. And that, that's what they're talking about in Dragonfly, making an important thing. Uh, back to the basics of the world being good. But phasing, sharding, layering. Uh, layering's not too bad because it is one la it's it's not great though layering is not a great thing but sharding and phasing are really bad i hate walking into an area and my the mobs the the quest givers like transposing themselves and becoming a different version of themselves and all the people around me disappearing and new people reappearing because i entered a new phase i can't stand it it's obnoxious uh it ru it really ruins the game for me whenever i'm out in the open world it just feels so bad and then world channel content channel and suffered from the zones being split yeah it's kind of weird to have to fly every time right you feel like you're in a loading screen every time you fly anywhere right you have to take a flying mount to get to the next zone which feels like a loading screen because you go through the portal there's like a big you know vortex and then you get and then oh you're back in the new and you're like okay that was a loading screen we get it yeah i'm gonna be cars and go in and simplify mechanics and have an easier than intended time so we have to acknowledge it in that world um do we want to encourage, do we want you to feel like you have to download third party programs to mm -hmm. succeed in your game? Nope. That that none of that feels good. Uh, over the years, we've tried to incorporate aspects of that functionality in our base. Even you know, sometimes it's just design, like making telegraphs better, or using the energy bars of bosses, mana bars, or other ways of signaling. Hey, when this bar fills up, a huge ability is going to happen, so you don't need a timer to let you know to prepare for it. Um, Information is something we want to continue to improve and provide in our game. I think that's a core function of encounter design. The problem that we've seen and that we don't really know how to solve, frankly, right now, is that over the last few years, especially, add-ons have moved out of informational into more and more computational. It's insane. And, and like that, then that's the kind of thing that's like solving the problem for you doesn't feel like a thing that it would be, be bizarre for our own UI to do. Like, and it, a random you know example we were talking about this actually in the office last week um you know wrath classics coming out later this year eventually you're gonna get the ice crown citadel um random encounter from wrath that came to mind was like blood queen lanathel and ice crown citadel yeah really simple fight a couple of mechanics almost patchwork level but the one signature mechanic of course was you know gotta turn to a vampire bite other people so that you don't get mind controlled Back in the day, I think I, as a raid leader anyway, I think most people kind of call that out on the fly. Call you know, out have names, rough, yeah. yeah. like you have some rough sense of like, hey, these are our top DPS, or, you know, these are, um, you know, people who are, you know, fight the healers last, see, see what happens, and you're, it's fun. You have frantic call outs, and it, it could be hard. Sometimes you would, you know, wipe just because you had to go from 8 to 16, people got confused. I can guarantee that when Wrath Classic Lanathal comes around, it's going to be get a weak aura. Yep. You list the people in your raid from top to bottom in terms of DPS priority. Everyone installs the weak aura. And when you become a vampire, all it's all it's going to say is fight this person. No one has to speak. No one has to do anything. Um, that kind of that just that's not great all around. That doesn't feel like where we want our raid encounters to land. Huh. In some ways, it stops us from doing cooperative mechanics and coordination. That's fun. And I think like all of this was always possible. People just never did it. Like in add-ons back in the day, like bigwigs and stuff actively tried to avoid even making strategy recommendations. It was purely informational. And so maybe there's like an alternate timeline where if guilds had been doing this stuff 12 years ago, the same way AVR got locked down or like back in classic cast canceling add-ons and, decur and you know, decursive got changed, maybe that change would have happened. But now we have like a decade worth of add-ons, including things you use to play your rotation better and all the rest that are built on that framework. Um, so it's not clear what the path forward is. I think we would have to we'd have to like do something like restrict what add-on APIs can access yeah. at least in raids and dungeons. I mean, they did that a long time ago. You guys remember? I remember a big deal about it. I think it was in like um, uh, I think it was right as Azara came out, or maybe right after Azara came out. But they used to have like literally no no no. It was um it was Sargeras, I think no no, uh Kill Jaden back in Wad, I think. But there was literally like it would have an arrow would appear on your screen and say, Go here. Like this is your assigned spot. And you'd be like, Oh, oh okay. You just follow the arrow. The the add on would literally highlight an area on the ground for you nearby and like it could paint on the like the game would 
They, they would like the add-ons themselves would paint the area and be like, this is your zone. This is your spot. Go right here. And you would just like follow and continue your rotation and stay on the green dot. Okay. Um, and they removed that. They removed it uh, to, to make it so you couldn't do that anymore. The game wouldn't be able to tell you exactly where they go, right? Uh, so they, they, they cut it back on a lot of what the, what the add-ons were allowed to do. Uh, it sounds like what he wants to do that again with another cut back. Maybe offer, try to offer more of the like proc tracking class mechanic stuff in our base UI and maybe get to a place where we can design encounters from the ground up. Still hard, still meant to, you know, take a couple dozen pulls on heroic or a hundred pulls if it's a late mythic end boss. That's not what we're, you know, we're not talking about nerfing stuff or making it easier, but we'd have to make those changes in concert. Um, it's a lot to tackle, and I know that for a lot of players, hey, we broke the thing that you rely on that makes the game, you know, feel more accessible to you, isn't exactly a good message to swallow either. So, no easy answers, but it's something we're, we're thinking about a lot. Yeah, I, I think so. I remember very clearly back in ICC where AVR got disabled, and then also, didn't that happen also in Nighthold with like uh, Star Augur and Exorcist too? Yeah, it was like that. Yeah, that was like different ways of putting the 3D lines, stuff, like attaching to nameplates, or yeah. yeah. So have you oh, okay. have you all yeah, ever thought about actually just like disabling the combat add-ons? Has there ever been conversations about that, or is it just kind of an idea? It's I mean, it's an idea that we've had conversations yeah. about. The okay. Challenge is like the fundamental piece is can add-ons tell what buffs and debuffs you have on you and members of your group have on them? If we say no, okay, cool, we just broke like all raid frames everything that you use to, you know, even just baseline, you know, tracking uptime of your slice and dice or whatever, you just want an add-on that makes that easier to see. We broke all of that. Wow. That would be, I think, pretty pretty ruinous for a good chunk of our player base to do suddenly. So I think we want to try to figure out a path forward, but it's not clear. Okay, yeah, I think that makes sense. And will, will we be seeing some of those improvements and kind of some of those implementations of some add-on features in the new UI that's going to be coming out in Dragonflight? Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is something, and it, you know, it, we, I, I guess we didn't get a chance to really touch on it in the deep dive. Um, yeah. Crash Reed, who was you know the UI designer speaking in that deep dive, one of the things that he's worked on is kind of a, it's it's kind of trying to replicate what a lot of people do with weak ors, which is centralizing information about buff, buff up time, debuff up time, cooldown tracking, um, kind of pulling that information towards the center of your screen. So the default UI experience, you know, we can flag abilities for your class as things that you should be able to track very visibly. Yeah. Um, we can even show things, you know, externals. Like if you're a tank and someone puts paint suppression on you, paint suppression duration should be right there in the middle of your screen under your character if you opt to have that on next to your shield wall or whatever else, because that's helping you manage your own ability usage. Again, of course, like a pro tank with weak ors is gonna customize things that's like just for them, but we want the default out of the box experience to be much, much better. And we know yeah. that like, it's not realistic to design mechanics that ask you to track uptime of a buff when that buff is like a flashing thing in the corner of your screen 12 inches away from where your eyes are focused otherwise. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need to do better. Dragonflight's UI isn't just aesthetic. I want to see. I, I hope they bring it to Wrath. I, yeah, I know I'm excited to see. I know it sounds silly, but I'd like to see Wrath the Lich can get a UI upgrade as well. But I guess they won't because it's probably not worth it. And there's also add-ons that do it already, so you don't really need it. But I would like the base UI of Wrath to be upgraded as well. I know it sounds kind of... Uh, silly but i i just think it's a good i think it'd be it'd be nice for me i don't want to have to install add-ons every patch it annoys me see that i think that's something that's long overdue and i know almost everybody uses something that's similar to that too and i was also wondering uh you know obviously add-ons make it easier and i don't really ever think that we're going to see a world where none of the raids or dungeons are on ptr or something. like in the ui updates yeah i i love the ui update i i like the idea of moving all my stuff to the center of my screen and moving things around and 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 putting things where so my eyes don't have to go like the the base UI when I play on private servers and stuff and I have to get add-ons to fix it it annoys me it's like a lot of work to set up my character and set up all my stuff and like figure I hate like that's the part of the game I don't enjoy is the UI setup and that all that thing I want the the base game to be good enough so I don't have to go download seven different UI add-ons every time I install the game on a new computer or like and then get it all back to the way i want it and then every if i if i you know make a a new character i have to spend you know 15 minutes setting up my ui every time like 
it just annoys me. I, I mean, I know the game you play for hours and days on end, and so that UI time is actually pretty small, but it feels bad to make a new character every time because you're like, okay, can we, can we play it? But were were you all happy with what happened with the uh, with with Sepulcher and not having some of those fights on the PTR? Because I do think that data mining and a certain degree of it, like for example, we saw the Jailer's corpse before we knew what happened. At the end. Call me a skeptic, but something like Healcom, they could have put in the default UI five years ago without interfering. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think they could have as well. I think heel com would be nice as well to to say like have your tell other people where your heels are going, automatically. At the rate, that's a little bit of a spoiler, right? So like, do you think that is a uh, a negative thing for the game, and do you think that we'll see more content not being on PTR and players actually experiencing it whenever it comes out? Uh, it, it I think we're happy with how the Sepulchre bosses worked out. You know, there, there weren't like completely free of bugs, but overall, I think it was a smooth experience for all the guilds that went through it and all difficulties. And the fact that like it was a genuine surprise and people were figuring it out as they went, like all of that was exciting to see. We'd like to do more of that. Um, data mining in general, I mean, I think when it comes to when it comes to story, definitely makes for some odd like piecemeal. Yeah. You know, experiences where this portion of the story is visible but then like no one knows what the cinematic is so then all of the focus becomes you know the cinematic as opposed to the entire story that's told in context yeah ultimately we want to strike a balance between being able to to get the feedback that's going to be important to make the game better i think if we didn't have ptr at all well people wouldn't have had a chance to tell us after playing with and testing their set bonuses on target dummies or going into the raid that hey this is this feels kind of frustrating or you know i don't like the way this interacts with my rotation yeah and we wouldn't want to lose all of that. That's not like finding bugs. That's just getting ahead of important feedback that's going to make the game better for more people. Yeah. But the flip side is, yeah, there's, there's something magical about just a sense of mystery and discovery that's really hard to get. It's impossible to preserve in the modern day and age. Like everything's going to be on the internet. There's going to be guides. It's on YouTube or guys. whatever. Yeah. But like, yeah, the, the more it's out there before the thing is even officially launched, the more there isn't even that tiny window to enjoy a sense of discovery. Um, Oh, I know. I know you you played this game a bunch. Like, yeah, you know, played a lot of Elden Ring right when it came out a couple months ago. And one of the really fun things about that first week, especially with how vast that game was, is like you could there you could go to a wiki and the wiki would be blank because people hadn't figured it out yet. You could you know find a cave and be like, I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to find here, and no, there's nothing that will tell me right now. Of course, over time the meta gets solved, but being able to feel like yeah, you have that sense of discovery and exploration. I mean, that's what a new game does, right? To get back to that's why. Um, and just you know, working on encryption technology, working on thinking about how we can test portions of our game without revealing the whole thing for everybody. All that is stuff that I think is in our long term. I mean, how does Elden Ring? How does Elden Ring test its game without revealing all this, as as testers? Like, I don't understand what the problem is here. Like, what? Like. <laughs> you have testers. What are, what, are you, what are you talking about? Like at plans. That would be awesome. And yeah, I totally agree. It's like whenever there's something new in the game and nobody really knows how it works, I think that a really good example of this on a small scale they pay testers. is the puzzles. Whenever the community is working together to figure out the puzzles, that's like one of the most hype moments for everybody. So I'm really glad to hear that. It's millions of small thing I was team, wondering yeah. about is the uh, what do you think is going to happen? Like now, Wrath of the Witch King Classic coming out. Obviously, Wrath of the Lich King is going to run its course. Then what? Um, yeah, so at this point, you know, we I'd love to hear from you, from the community as a whole, what you want to come next. Uh, I think okay. we're gonna have, you know, we have a, a player base that really has made Classic their home. Many people who've carried their characters forward from Classic into Burning Crusade and likely into Wrath beyond that. And, you know, when, when that comes to an end, when you defeat the Lich King, or sorry, when you actually, when you kill Halion, the ultimate end boss of <laughs> Wrath of the Lich King. Oh, yeah. Um, can't forget the Sanctum, come on. Um, well, do you want, do you want to start over? Do you want to try a different version of that? Do you want to carry, ca carry that character forward into a new adventure? Um, I know if, you know, Cataclysm for many people was like, oh, that's the beginning of the end. And, you know, I'm, I'm out. Once the world revamp, ends. yeah. But I'd ask, like, an interesting question is maybe, like, what is it about Cataclysm that you don't like? Is it, was it the Heroic Dungeons that was bad? Is Firelands a bad raid? Is Twilight Highlands a bad zone? Like, is that the problem? Or was it 
I don't know, LFR and Dungeon Finder from the start and removing group quests from the world or whatever else or compressing the talent trees. Like, what would it look like if you had had a content with some with some changes? Um, lots of stuff is on the table, but could be, I really welcome that discussion now that the fact that we're doing Wrath is, you know, no longer the world's worst kept secret and actually something that's known, but we're listening. Okay, that's great. I, I had no idea that there was like, yeah, you're just waiting to see what the community wants to wants to hear. And I guess to a certain extent, that's kind of what you were probably doing with Season of Mastery, I'm assuming. Very much so, yeah. Okay, all right. I, I know we don't have a lot of time here, so I do want to do one last question. And what? so uh, at the end of Legion, so like there's a cinematic and Sargeras, as you know, uh, stabbed uh, the Earth with a, a sword and it's been there for quite a while and I, i'm not really sure like where where are things going with that okay wait what what sword it... uh, okay all right all right all right i i get it i see that's pretty much exactly what i would expect okay thank you ian i really appreciate you coming on today uh this was amazing i hope that we can do it again by the way so feel free exciting. anytime yeah, feel free anytime to come on my stream. If the PR is not going to freak out too much about it, please feel free. Come on my stream and hang out whenever you want. Sounds good. Yeah, thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to Dragonfight. I'll see you later. Thanks, Zach. Take Thanks care. You. Peace. Okay, let's see here. Um, let's see if I got everything good, and I've got to make sure What's that he's... I, I can't believe it. Um, all right. I think that we're good. Linksy, are we good? Let me make sure. You that... are great. Okay, Thank I'm good. Did, so, I do, so did I do a good job? Oh, my gosh. That was great. Great questions. You did wonderful. Thank you. I love your segues, too. You're so good. Yeah, well, yes. you know, it's it's <laughs> that's what you do. It's a professional thing. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for setting all this up. I, Thank I really you so much. It. Of course. Thanks for reaching out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I will be more than willing to do it again in the future. So just let me know. Okay. Sounds okay. great. All right. See you later. Bye. Bye. Good luck, stream. Bye, stream. Thanks. <laughs> cool, dude. That's cool. What sword? <laughs> all right. That's awesome.